Yes, thank, thank you, everyone. Thank for the opportunity to um, speak to you today. I call this uh, high-level remarks, um, the greatest investment challenge ever. Well, of course, as you know, you could have taken out the investment and put in innovation instead. The greatest innovation challenge ever. It's the greatest maritime challenge ever. And there's a lot of talk about this uh, climate change. So in all these words just flying around, I was thinking to myself, pick out a few and see if you can kind of agree on some high level items here. So what is it about this climate challenge that makes us kind of face with such an existential threat that you want? Well, the first thing is that, uh, as Chris started with, it's actually really urgent. We thought that we can use 100 years to change um, what kind of energy we're using. Then it was 30 years because of the climate challenge. Then you look at the energy security situation, at least in Europe, and we're talking five to 10 years. The second thing is that it's enormously large. The total investment in the world's energy complex this year is going to be 2.4 trillion. That has to be changed dramatically. Today is roughly half and half, 900, 900 billion each in oil and gas and renewables but it will have to change considerably. But it has to increase also. It probably has to go to between three and a half trillion dollars every year invested in the energy complex. Now that actually, it's easy to do numbers since the world GDP is 100 trillion US dollars, we are going from 2% of world GDP to 4% of world GDP is gonna be invested in this. And the third thing is that this challenge is going to affect absolutely every sector in the economy. Maritime sector, of course, but it's also all the industry we're having. The situation we have today is very similar in one sense to the early 70s, where all industry realized that they were using too much energy. Now we have realized the industry is producing too much CO2. So we have a capital investment wave going on, not only in the energy sector, but also in all the different industries, whether it's metals, mining, marine, and this investment challenge is going to be hitting absolutely every industry that we have. Now, so the very first simple point that this is urgent, it's large, and it's going to hit all sectors. But why then is it so incredibly difficult? Because certainly it is. If it was easy, we would have been way on the way already. Well, the first thing is simply this. We have built a fantastic economy, which is a market-based economy. The market-based economy is leading to innovation and is giving price signal for us to allocate capital resources, etc. The problem is just that our global commons, that we really, all of us, appreciate, where it's up in the air, the atmosphere, whether it's the nature we have on Earth, or whether it's the oceans, it is global commons for a reason. The commons is not priced. If there's no price signal, we're gonna to continue to throw out the CO2 and the methane up in the atmosphere. We're gonna to continue to throw out plastic in the oceans. So the first reason why it's so challenging is that this commons problem that we have is not aligned with the structure of economy that we have created. Now, the second reason why it's so incredibly difficult is that the things we try to replace or change is incredibly useful for our lives. Plastic in the ocean, why is it so much plastic in the ocean? Well, because plastic is a fantastic material. It's strong, light, can be adapted to everything. We're not gonna stop using plastic. That's not gonna work. We just have to make sure it doesn't go into the oceans. But even more so with the energy we have, LNG, as you can see how easy it seems to be to replace uh, a lot of energy just with LNG, carriage that's uh, going around in the world now. Well, it's because that oil and natural gas is so dense and compact and so easy to move around. One LNG carrier is enough to charge 10 million electric cars. One carrier. So if you sit and look at it, this challenge we have 
is going to be extraordinary difficult quite simply because the energy that we can replace it with solar and wind is not as dense is not as concentrated it's not as easy to transport now the third reason why this is going to be so incredibly difficult is that as you know you've probably seen the inflation statistics they always talk about inflation x food and energy that's because food and energy is the most elementary, necessary need we have. You know, if we're not hungry and not cold, well, we're at least going to survive. Energy security is going to trump the climate issue at every stage here. And the reason is, of course, is an elementary, necessary thing for the way we live our lives. And energy, as you know, also goes into food, etc. And you see that in the current discussion of fertilizers, but it's going to be food, it's going to be transport, it's a tractor goes out of the field, it's going to be refrigerated in the stores, and we basically have a very high energy content also in food. So it's difficult because it's not aligned with the market economy. First, it's difficult because it's so useful, the things we're using for the moment, and it's difficult because we need to take care of our real needs first. Now, the third thing. So this is big. This is difficult. But this is also really complex. Much more challenging than I kind of thought when I started to look into this, this issues here. And the first thing is that when we are transitioning to a new energy system, we currently have 80% carbon-related energy and 20% renewable. And we're going to move to 2080, some people think. Well, maybe 50-50 by 2050, if you're lucky. Now, the electrification is the best thing that can happen with regards to energy efficiency. Think about the electric cars as a simple example. The combustion engine managed to use roughly 30 to 35 percent of that energy. Electric car, nearly all of it. So we have to electrify. And we, have to, we are going to electrify also, quite simply because we are going from 8 billion people today to 9.7 billion people in 2050. But we're also going from the urbanization of 50% to 70%, so two and a half billion new people living in cities. So the strong trend of urbanization is also going to lead to more electrification. The second mega trend we have is digitalization. Well, digitalization also means more electrification. So electrification is fantastic, it's the way to go. However, the more I sit and look at it, the more this challenge starts to dawn on you, because these electrical grids we have is not built for this. They have to be stable, and all energy that goes in has to go out at the same time, so everything has to be balanced. Much more difficult than you would think. But in addition, all the renewable green energy, whether it's sun or wind or others, they're not base load, as it's called. They are varying all the time, so prices are going to fly up and down. So we have an, both an operational challenge and a challenge with regards to price mechanism. And this variation is going to make the requirement for us and the sophistication we have to put in terms of how we construct society on a completely different level. Fantastic opportunity for anyone who's doing innovation, of course, and incredibly important. Now, the second thing is that uh, we're not going to be able to solve the global local discussion here, because a lot of these energy sources now is going to be local. Sun and wind is local. And oil, natural gas is global. It is much easier to create an efficient and good market. If you have a global good that's going to be purchased and used locally, something is going to be produced locally but used globally, that's incredibly difficult. That leads me to the last third point, why this is complex. It's really three elements to this. How we produce energy, how we move energy, and how we use energy. Nearly all the discussion I hear in the public sphere is about how we're going to produce energy, solar wind, or the energy efficiency, going to electrical cars. But it's the third element, who's the really important one? How do we move this around? In Europe, we're building an enormous amount of wind power in the North Sea, but no one has really thought about that. This is going to hit the shores of northern Germany, 
how do you get it to the rest of the continent? So moving around of energy, because the energy form we have, oil and gas, as you shippers know, it's quite easy to move. But when we are moved to an electric system, it's going to be very difficult. The challenges, as all you need to know, with going to hydrogen and how you move that around, is just the starting point. So to sum it up, very simply, in one sense, this is fantastic. It's the biggest investment challenge ever. It's the biggest innovation challenge ever. You're going to create exciting new societies. But just a reminder, it's going to be extraordinarily difficult, and it's much more complex, I think, than most, most people appreciate. And then I think, and this is my final comment, small countries like Norway and Singapore, we can drive electric cars, and we can be vegetarians, and we can be best in class. Maybe even lead by the example. It is really not going to help the situation. If we are actually going to be a good global citizen, we have to take the business community, that is you, creating interesting solutions that we can go global with and change the world through innovation, through industry, and through creating new markets. So I wish you all all the best luck. And I hope that Singapore and Norway really can go into this together. Thanks a lot.